Hey, what's going on guys? Dylan DeJesus here, and today we're gonna be talking about one of the most insane custom sneaker projects I've ever come across. So if by some chance you still haven't seen the video that Jabo Airbrush put out on these Mortal Kombat Nike Blazers, definitely go check out his YouTube video before we move on into today's video. Essentially what he did was create an entire stop motion video showcasing the entire process of painting these Nike Blazers, and the entire process took well over a thousand hours to do. Now that is a mind-blowing amount of time to spend on one custom sneaker project, so there was no way we could let the opportunity to go by without talking to him about it. One of the first things that we talked about, of course, had to be about the creation of this stop motion process. Now, stop motion is a filmmaking technique in which objects are physically manipulated between individually photographed frames to give the appearance of motion. So rather than just setting up the camera, pressing record, and creating a typical time lapse, with stop motion, you're taking a ton of individual photos, therefore giving you a little bit more control over all of the motions occurring. And so here's what Jordan had to say about the differences between creating your typical time lapse and creating this entire stop motion animated video. Where did you develop the conscious decision to do stop motion versus sort of a behind the scenes time lapse? Yeah, well, that's what I had been doing is time lapses for forever. And actually, when I was little, I like really liked stop motion and I would make little clay figures, but I never had the, the equipment, the cameras and everything were so expensive. You needed special monitors. You can't, you just can't do it easily. And now it's like an app, a free app on my phone. Uh, so I was like, oh man, it's just like a free stop motion app. And I just started messing around with it. And I did a little video of a pair of shoes or just a single shoe actually of the tape, you know, wrapping around it. I touch it with a brush, it magically gets painted, just as a test to see if I could do it. And it turned out like so good, I, I used the video. And then I knew later down the road, I'm gonna do this, but like on a bigger project, like with a really sick pair of shoes. So when this came about, I knew this was gonna be the project. So do you have a good estimate on, let's take one of the side portraits of Scorpion or Sub-Zero, do you have an estimate on maybe just the portrait part how many pictures that is yeah uh i think one of the, one of those uh would have been probably like two or three hundred photos i would find like uh i i generally work where it's like 15 frames a second but i'm speeding them up and slowing them down all the time so that's not fully accurate but uh if it would take me like a day to do it uh, it just kind of would depend if I wanted it to happen fast too or happen slowly, mm -hmm. you know. If I'm going to do a detailed portion or if I'm just running my hand across it, it's like it's two different things of how many photos it could be. So real time, no stop motion, no time lapse, you're just working. How long would a portrait like that take you just airbrushing it? Uh, I think I would do one of those in like six hours. And then with all the stop motion and the constant stopping, yeah. all of that, how long does that six hours turn into? Like three days. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah of like eight, eight ish hour days, you know? So that is a ton of additional work to be putting in. Sometimes as artists, you kind of just want to get in your zone, zone out and just create your artwork, but needing to stop and take all of these individual photos just adds another layer of complexity to a project like this. And it can really push you outside of your comfort zone, but sometimes that's where the magic can happen. Next up, I wanted to talk about some of the unforeseeable challenges that doing a stop motion video just like this presented for Jordan. I have to imagine at some point you, you hit a wall where you say, I kind of want to stop this whole video stop motion thing and, and just get to the painting. Did you run into that feeling at all? Yeah, and that was sort of combated with doing it that Photoshop way. Because uh, I was like, this is, for one, going to take forever. But it's mostly I just didn't want to repeat myself. I, I came to the point where like, I painted the toe, uh, the logo, the Mortal Kombat logo, on the toe of the shoe. And my original plan was to have the other shoe, like it's like this, the other shoe swing in, hit it out of the way, and then I'll paint that toe. But I thought, well, I'm just repeating myself. The image on these shoes is basically mirrored but opposite colors. So I can't just constantly show me paint the one character, show me paint the reverse character, show me paint this character, show me paint that. So I thought, well, let's not do that at all. Let's completely mix it up. And once you've watched the detail painting of, say, the Scorpion character get painted, well, I don't need to do that again for the Sub-Zero character. So what I did in that instance was have the vinyl sort of cover him like it's an icicle and then explode off he's automatically painted so the good thing for me during that time was i just got to just paint the sub-zero not on camera or anything like that at all 
put it back into position, retape it, and we're good to film again. So it saved time, but it also like mixed things up and made it more interesting. Yeah, I think being that, you know, you could sort of break the shoe down into, you know, the Mortal Kombat logos on both the toes, portraits on the outsides and insides, and then the intricate work of the, just the heads on the back tabs, I think you found a way to not, to constantly change up the process, which I thought was amazing to do and, and play with different techniques of sometimes making it look like you just applied a paintbrush to the whole area versus here you are airbrushing it, you know, inch by inch and, and stuff like that. So I love that you constantly switched it up and it was just right. such an engaging video. So sure. I, I can't uh, commend you enough on that. Thanks, man. Yeah, I think that was the point was sort of to keep it interesting. I didn't want to repeat uh, and just finding like the beauty of stop motion is that you don't have to watch it in real time, right? The point is to make it look magical. I just run my hand across it, all of a sudden it's painted. Uh, yeah. So how cool is that, you know? So it sounds like it, that you were sort of just going with the flow and, and making up the shots as you went along. What I want to hear about is what was a scene that you wanted to make, but you had to scrap it because it ended up being too difficult? What was something that you tried and it just ended up not working out? Um, I didn't really have to scrap any ideas. I think they just like, uh, they, they moved along and progressed as I went. I thought the, the one that was the hardest was that circling shot while I'm painting it. The movement of the shoe isn't that smooth. And again, I would blame that on not having great rigging. And I was like, there's no scrapping it because once the shoe's painted, I can't go back and repaint it. Right. So yeah, there's really not a possibility of scrapping anything, you know, I have to use it. So I have to try and make it as, as good as I can. Um, I, I think most of the ideas I had, I was able to achieve. It's just if they turned out as good as I hoped, I'm not sure, you know. I think one thing that really resonated with me there is that Jordan didn't go into this with necessarily a ton of experience when it comes to stop motion, but he was willing to learn as he went along on this journey. And just being willing and open to taking on new challenges is probably something that we could all benefit from. And not only is his video a total masterpiece, but Jordan is far and away one of the most detailed airbrush artists I've ever come across. So I definitely wanted to talk to him a little bit more about his workflow and painting process for this project. What portion of the shoe do you think best describes sort of the JBO paint process? Yeah, that would definitely be the Mortal Kombat logo on the toe, the blue one. It basically shows how I actually work through the process, like putting on the vinyl, uh, just that tape for overspray, and then I basically un unmask a section, paint it, remask it, unmask the next section, paint it, remask it. And that's, that's actually how I actually work. It just was sort of a long process to show on video, so I didn't continue to do it that way. Basically the toe and the first uh, side, side shot of the scorpion is sort of pretty authentic as well. And then your use of stencils here is really just to help guide, sort of give you some nice hard edges when working on a material like canvas to really help define it, right? Yeah, like I'll use the vinyl for actual color sections. That's how I look at it. If there's going to be a shirt and there's a hard line and then there's skin tone, I will, that'll be a separate vinyl section. But any wrinkles or anything inside that color section, I'll freehand and I'll use uh, a stencil or a freehand shield. Uh, to just get sharper lines and really yeah, punch it. Yeah, I find canvas doesn't sh take uh, the paint the same, so I need to really punch a hard edge, and I do that with the stencil to help that. Yeah, for sure. So for a project like this, how are any parts at all done with a paintbrush? I only use a paintbrush for like small details. And because the way that I'm painting and that the fact that they're canvas, I feel like I'm more like dyeing the shoe as opposed to sort of prepping it in a way that I'm painting on top of the shoe. The paint sitting on top, yeah, right? Paint, yeah, paint isn't really sitting on top. So when I use a brush with my sort of reduced out paint that I'm using, it, uh, it sort of absorbs in. So it's kind of hard to use a brush. So I kind of use it just for like highlight pops and deep little like dark pockets that I'm, uh, I want to get sharp and just that a little bit deeper, the brush kind of gives me that. It is always so cool to see somebody who is truly a master at their craft at work. And to know that he does all of this mainly with just an airbrush, that is absolutely incredible. And for those of you that are wondering, since I know I was, the airbrush that he uses is an Iwata HPC Plus. 
But now for some more behind the scenes stuff, I was very curious, how do you go about not getting overwhelmed when you know you're working on a project that's gonna take you multiple months and over a thousand hours to do so? But now for some more behind the scenes stuff, I was very curious how Jordan would go about not getting too overwhelmed working on a project like this that you know is going to take an extreme amount of time and this whole stop motion thing that not everybody else is doing, what's required to even make one? And so compiling this video together over uh, you know, three months, how often were you sort of, was it maybe when you got through each major logo or each portrait, that's when I'm gonna do a video for that portion or how did you decide when I'm gonna just continue to work and try to get these done versus I wanna, I wanna do this portion of the video so that the workload at the end doesn't become too overwhelming. Sure, yeah. Looking at the project overall it was too overwhelming and I didn't really plan that far ahead. Like the idea to kill the, to kill the airbrush came just out of, I don't wanna keep repeating myself and painting the same thing. So I would just absolutely work a little bit at a time. I know I'm gonna do, I know they're gonna fight at the beginning and then it's gonna swing around and I'm gonna paint that logo on it. And like I said, at that time, originally I was gonna paint the other one right away, but I thought I gotta mix it up. So I really didn't plan too far ahead but I still had an overall vision. Like I knew I had the fatalities on the heel. Uh, I had the design, so it was sort of like, what way do I wanna make the shoes move and fight to land me in my next position to paint? Uh, the sort of fighting is the storyline in between all of the art stuff. Yeah, I think that one of my favorite parts was you somehow even found a way to make uh, taping look really interesting at the start of the video with the tape ball shooting across from one shoe sure. to the other. I want to ask about some equipment that you used in some of the behind the scenes shots. What are some of the, the little rigs, clamp setups? Tell me about when you picked and choose to kind of use what for what purposes. Sure. Yeah, first I'll go on, on, the on what you said about the tape stuff. Uh, so I think that part of it is really cool because I think you don't even, the viewer doesn't even notice that I'm actually taping up the shoes. Like, it looks sort of just like they're fighting, so here's the ice ball. But it was really like uh, my, the most clever way I could think to get the shoes taped without it, uh, without like my hands having to do it. I just wanted, uh, you know, the, the get over here is introducing the, the fact that it's Mortal Kombat. Uh, as well as, you know, the ice ball freeze smash. Um, so I like that part of it too. The, the taping went on in a pretty interesting way. Uh, as far as the rigging goes, uh, it was difficult. I don't have proper rigging. I'm really new to stop motion. So I basically uh, taped up blocks with black tape and I would pile them on the shoe. Uh, later, I found a way to use a camera sort of uh, boom and do it but it was really hard because okay. it's on like uh you know it locks in and clicks so it would be really hard to get smooth transitions i have some armature wire for stop motion that i i was basically just making it up i was just rigging it the whole way thinking what will work better eventually i ended up having some heavy vices then and a whole bunch of armature wire heavy armature wire that could actually handle the weight of the shoes the problem with the shoes versus a lot of stop motion stuff is they're heavy. And when you're when you want to have a rig come out of the shot, it needs to be so strong to support the weight of the shoe. And I just didn't have that. So I ended up having to do hours and hours of just deleting my rigging. It, 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 that was the biggest thing on this job that I didn't realize time-wise how bad it was going to be. Because what I do is essentially on Clip Studio, one frame at a time like i look at the frame i have to delete you gotta delete the ring yeah. tracing around like you would do for your final photo of your shoe if you want to have a nice black backdrop but i'm doing mm -hmm. that for every single frame and then what happens is it's not even that natural looking because now i've cut the shadow out so i'm ended up uh sort of painting in fake shadows on a lot yeah. of it to eliminate that rigging and make it look smooth if you were to to uh, overly analyze the video and watch the shadow the whole time, you could see that it's a little bit choppy. But uh, it, I think if you're not looking for it, you don't really notice it. So I, I got through it. That's one of the beautiful things about stop motion is that it's, it's so fluid and it moves so fast that nobody's gonna be able to catch missing shadows or improperly placed shadows, anything like sure. that. The video just constantly moves. Yeah, yeah, learning, a learning thing for me is that in the future, I should 
uh, get better rigging so it can just be like a little bar that comes out of the shot and you easily just erase like this much of a shot instead of everything around the shoe and drawing fake shadows and things like that. So stop motion is a whole lot more than just taking a bunch of photos and combining them together. Sounds like it is definitely quite the tedious process. During my time talking with Jordan over the past couple weeks about getting through this project and us collabing together and doing this video, I definitely felt a sense of accomplishment finally getting through this. And I'm sure a lot of you fully understand that feeling of finally getting through something that you poured your heart and soul into. So overall, what do you think was your favorite scene from the whole video? Well, my favorite scene in terms of like uh, doing really good stop motion is the backflip when the shoes uh, get sort of uppercutted through the roof like that happens in Mortal Kombat. Um, I did, a, that was the first time I used the green screen in it and it was also how I did the, uh, basically I had a moving camera. That's the only time in the entire thing where the camera angle actually changes. And I had the floor tear and I had the shoe do a backflip and I, I didn't really know how I was gonna do that. So I thought originally I was gonna build like a fake floor and actually have the shoes tear through and come- Punch through it. Yeah. yeah, and I thought, well, I'm doing a lot of it in post, you know, by stitching backgrounds together fakely. I can probably film my, you know, my camera moving and I can film the floor tearing and I can film a much smoother backflip without rigging. Like my, a big problem I've been having is the rigging and getting it to move smoothly. So I thought, well, I'll just tape some paint sticks to the shoe and manually turn it around. And when I'm actually doing it, it's super slow. And it like takes, I set the camera to take a picture every like second or two or something. So I move it, let it take the picture, move it, let it take the picture. And then by the time I'm done, I'm like this and I'm like, ah, my arms need to rest. But then I was able to just uh, after, in post, just stitched it all together. And it's the most movie-like to me. It's the most cinematic shot of the whole thing. It looks like the shoe actually just tears out and lands. It doesn't look so stop motioned. And I was like, well, this is like a more professional way of doing things, I think. They're working a lot with, when you watch the, the pros do it, they're working a lot with like green backgrounds. And uh, so that's the one that I think was the most sort of work for a non-painting part and was definitely I'm most proud of. Another favorite part of mine is the uh, the sort of noob Sabot toasty, whatever one the, uh, <laughs> comes in. That's like a bit of an Easter egg for Mortal Kombat fans. So I always thought that part was actually so stupid, uh, but it's it's funny. If you're like a big fan of the game, you, you would recognize that part. If you didn't, you were probably like, what, what is he doing there? But I basically stitched my face on uh, on the character when he comes in. And Coming in the lower right. Out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, I think I felt that when watching the video that this also came from a, a fan's perspective. You know what I mean? Yeah, and I was a fan of the game, but uh, the old version of it, like the, the original ones on Sega and stuff. Like I had it on Sega when you would enter the, the blood code and everything like that. I don't game so much myself anymore. The, all, yeah. the, all the like watching, you know, looking it up, uh, all the footage for the new games looks amazing. Like, it looks like a, an awesome game. I just don't have any new consoles. I don't really game anymore. But I definitely yeah. was a huge fan of the game when I was younger. So many incredible scenes and different effects achieved in this video. Really hard to nail down a favorite scene. But being a 90s baby like myself growing up playing Mortal Kombat, there's definitely some references to the game in series that you know have to be incorporated. Mainly like how any great battle ends. So one of the most recognizable things from Mortal Kombat as a whole is of course the the finish him and the fatality. I know yeah. and of course being sort of towards the end of the video, how did it, how did all of that come about? I'm sure you knew in your head all along that I have to really do justice here on this portion of the video. Yeah, totally. I I have the design already done so I know I'm going to do the fatalities. And since the the shoes are fighting throughout, I had to save the fatalities for the very end of the video. Um, but yeah, I didn't know how to approach it. I could basically do the same thing as I did before or say the example uh, where it's Scorpion's head and his like spines hanging down, the, the heel of the shoe. I could have just sort of made the image appear from bottom to top like I had done, uh, say on the, the yellow tongue scene. But I, I really wanted it to be a little more animated and have like them get killed in Mortal Kombat style. 
So basically what I did is I took the final image uh, and then worked backwards from it and sort of manipulated it in Photoshop. So I took, uh, I think is it, yeah, it would be Scorpion's head, which is split in two, and I reshopped it so it was whole again. You know, he hadn't been killed yet. Make the chain come up, cut him in half, and then split it. And when it ends, it ends in the actual painted image of the shoe. And I did the same thing for the head being, you know, pulled off and the spine hanging out and the spine sort of like swinging back and forth. I just needed to find a way to animate it. So none of that is authentically painted except for the final image you see. So you're saying that the scorpion head was never fully formed together. It's split apart and you combine it together for the start of the imagery. Yeah, totally. I just shocked Crazy. it that way. Yeah. Yeah. Just some incredible techniques put to use uh, for that. Great totally. stuff. And I'm, I'm just learning it as I go, too. I don't know necessarily how to do that. But since I'm doing stop motion anyway, now I'm just doing the stop motion digitally. Still doing it frame by frame, but I'm just manipulating the image, just pulling the head back and then making it come back in end in the position that it was painted in. Definitely nailed the landing there, in my opinion, and totally did justice for any true Mortal Kombat fan. Lastly, as our conversation began to wind down, I wanted to see if Jordan could offer up any advice for anybody else just starting out. So for people just starting out with airbrushing, what are a couple of your go-to tips if you're talking to Jordan, who's maybe 10 years younger, what's something you wish you could tell him? Um, I think that I would utilize all the great information that's out there on YouTube. When I was starting, I think YouTube might have been a thing, but I wasn't that aware of it. And there's just so much amazing information out there. And for like a business point of view, I think that you're not just don't just have to focus on your art. You need to you need to get it out there. So the, that's where the video thing has come so handy for me. Like this is huge. If I just painted these shoes and sent them away. I mean, maybe some people will see my completed pictures, but because I made this elaborate video of it, it makes the artwork that much more cool. So you need to get yourself on social media. You need to do, you know, all that stuff to push and promote yourself. Yeah, creating creating great artwork is, is only half the battle as an artist. It's all about the presentation and, and how do you display the artwork to the world. It's It's the other half of the battle. Absolutely. All right, Jordan, so my last question for you is what's next? How do you top this? Uh, well, you know what, when I did that, uh, the dragon shoes before these Mortal Kombat shoes, I thought the same thing. I was like, how am I going to make a pair of shoes cooler than these? Even when I did the design for these, uh, I didn't know if they would top them, but seeing them done and painted, uh, I think they do. And I think that's just going to be the case for me. I'm just going to constantly push it. Uh, not every pair of shoes I'm going to do an elaborate video like this for because I need to get work done in a reasonable amount of time. But I think there will be another a calling for another time where I'm like, this is going to be really cool. And I have another great idea for how I can make a stop motion video for it. And it'll just happen organically like this one did. So if this doesn't motivate you to get out there, just create and try something new, I don't know what else will. But let this be a learning experience for everybody to never stop pushing the boundaries for what's possible. And push yourself, get outside of that comfort zone, and that's where the magic can truly happen. We want to again give a massive thank you to Jordan for coming on and talking with us about this amazing custom sneaker project. Definitely one of the coolest things that I've ever come across. Also, just want to remind you guys, all entries for the DCF Floral Contest are due Friday, July 31st. Don't forget about that one. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Go ahead and give this video a like if you haven't already. Make sure you're subscribed, and we'll see you guys in that next video.